because the enemy is looking for one mystic to put you down. And once your eyes is off, it will strike. But keep your eyes on Christ. It doesn't matter the wind blowing, you will make it. I said, keep your eyes on Christ, you will make it. Keep our eyes on the vision, we will make it. It's still possible. Just keep your eyes on the vision. It doesn't matter what the enemy is doing. It will surely come to pass. Listen, the Lord has just commanded us to work harder. That is why we began a series on discipline. Because without discipline, success is not guaranteed. Success is not about skills. It's not only about talent. It's talent plus discipline. You must be disciplined. Wherever we are, wherever you are today, as a result, is a result of your level of discipline. Whatever you have lost, it's as a result of indiscipline. Indiscipline is a major enemy of success. It doesn't matter the vision, the talent, the skills. If you are not going to be disciplined, you are going to fail. You are going to fail. It's not the father that God gave you a home, or God gave you a house, or God gave you children. Those are good. But the responsibility of management of keeping, of growing things into divine uh, 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 vision rests squarely on you. So you have to take responsibility. It's accountability. Wherever we are, we deserve to be there. Wherever we are. So if you are really, really productive and you want to, be, you want to really move forward, you look at this study of discipline and give your heart to it. That is why God gave fathers, mothers, coaches. It's for discipline. It's called training. If you train a child the way it should go, when they grow up, it becomes their culture. It becomes their nature. The Bible says they will not depart. The greatest legacy you can give your child is discipline. It's not food. It's not holiday. It's discipline. A great parent, a great father is disciplined. Without discipline, you cannot be a good father. It is impossible. Your love without discipline is love with hatred. That's not love. Any genuine love must include discipline. That's what the Bible says it very clearly. That God will scourge with discipline a child that he loves. Love provokes correction. Discipline is not only correction, it is also training. It is strength. It is coaching. It is learning. That's why when you go to college, they call it discipline. They call it discipline. Courses are discipline. So, and it's also correction. It is, it's a way to en enable your grace so you can function to full capacity. Like I said, Every great success in this life are disciplined. And it's a great success. And any man who happened to succeed by chance with that discipline, you can write it down. They are going to fall. Because it takes discipline not only to succeed, but to maintain success. And now that the Lord is asking us to move to the next phase, we have been learning about discipline for the past few months, few weeks now. And we have looked into uh, six major discipline traits. Someone says six. We have looked into that. So we're going to run that up today. The, we're going to run that up today. And then next Sunday, we are going to have to begin to see how disciplined we are by taking the next phase of the assignment very serious. And what is the next phase of the assignment? The Lord has added to us so many children. And all our children are growing up now. They are coming of age. We cannot miss this critical period of discipline. 
So don't take it for granted. It's the age right now to capture those young boys at 10, at 12. Or else in the next two, three years, parents here, if you don't listen to me, you'll be having the same experience. This is the time now to catch them now and empower them with the things that is pertaining to where they are going. Train up a child the way he should go. It's your responsibility. There is a way he should go. There is a way they should go. You got to know it. I got to know it. We got to obey the Lord and get serious. That is called wise parenting. Wise foolish parents cry all the time because they themselves are fully indisciplined. It's not about just feeding baby or children. But right now, God has given us a lot of young people in this church. When I say a lot, not so many, but the few we have here, I see a lot of powerful grace, powerful vision. Every time I look at them, I see share. I see bad stuff. I see this and this. But when I pray, God shows me something different. I remember when Apostle Paul was praying and he called something unclean. God said, do not call what I have cleansed unclean. And I've had that experience many times. That will come in different shades, different colors, but deep within them is an assignment, grace, vision that God expects you to nurture as a leader, as a prophet, as a pastor, as a father. So I believe the hour has come and the time is now for this church to enter the new phase of raising giant killers in the name of Jesus. And you have been assigned to walk alongside with me on this assignment. And that's why God trained us on discipline. And the very first trait, discipline strength we talked about is what? Self what? What the first one? What the first one we talked about? Okay, we had six. Can you mention? Okay, I'll just mention them. And I'm going to call one of you here to define it for me, one or two statements. Amen. All right, we have self control. Say self control. So, Minister, Minister Aileen, what's self control? Amen. Self control is able to manage your emotions your thought and being in control of yourself. Amen. Say amen. Say amen. Say I am more than my emotions. I am more than my feelings. I am not my thought. Say I am not my thought. I am in control of my thought, in control of my emotions. Say I am a spirit in charge of my soul, in charge of my body. Say I am a spirit. Say I am a spirit. I am a spirit. I'm in charge of my thought, of my feelings. Somebody say louder, amen. Amen. And then you have to learn that. You have to learn that through parents. But somehow, if parents are failed in our lives, the Bible says, if father, mother I reject you, I will pick you up. That's why the churches of God are created to teach doctrine, to teach character. It's not only about coming to church for miracles or for healing. It should learn the character. It should learn the nature of God. The way you and I should behave normally. So if you missed it at home, or one culture or traditional education have damaged you, the church is a place to be now. Amen. So the place when you learn doctrine, character of discipline. It's the main thing that makes you a Christian. Every child of God is disciplined one. So self-control is one of the very first gifts of the Holy Ghost. The evidence that the Holy Ghost is disciplining you is self-control. I mean, you have recognized that you are born of the Spirit and you are a spirit. And your spirit is an entity different from your soul and different from your body. And your body has feelings. Your mind, your soul has thought. And your heart is the center of your spirit. The word of thought. But what controls you? What do you respond to? Who is in charge of your day-to-day -day activity? Is it your feelings? 
is it your thought? You think it, you do it, is that who you are? You feel it, you do it, is that who you are? Or you are possess your soul. Or you are in charge of your own body. It doesn't matter how you feel, you check it. Is this in line with what is in my spirit? Because the laws of God are written in your heart. They are written in your heart. God said, I'll put my law in their heart. That is where your direction, instruction should come from. So when you take a little thought, a little moment is called moment of meditation. You will now speak from your spirit. You move from your spirit. You talk from your spirit. The Bible says, now that you live in the spirit, you must also walk in the spirit. There are two different things. There's living in the spirit, born of the Holy Ghost, is different from walking in the spirit. So the question is this, are you walking in the spirit daily? Is your emotion being controlled by the emotion of your spirit? Are you being run by faith or with doubt? Doubt is in your head. Is that what is directing your decision? Are you being run by suspicion or by wickedness or by feeling of envy? What is in your body is immaterial. Your responsibility is to push them out. I mean, the man, father, you are tempted. It's not an excuse. Everybody gets tempted. Whether you're a pastor or minister, you're not escaping tempted. But to yield to temptation is your responsibility. Amen. To say no to feelings. You, I mean, you can feel like anything. It doesn't matter the feeling that comes on you. It doesn't matter the feelings that comes on you. You might see some feeling comes. You don't stay in your body. You push them out. That is what is called a strong spirit. So I'm a strong spirit. So I'm a strong spirit. So I'm in charge of my emotions. I can't do it because I just feel it. It has to be right with this feeling of my spirit. So I'm, sp I'm spiritual. See, I am spiritual. See, I am the head and not the tail. It doesn't matter what the enemy say I should do. I will only do what God says I should do. Amen. It doesn't matter what men say I should do. I will only do what God says I should do. So my spirit is in charge. That is what is called maturity. You have grown in the spirit. You've attended to your spirit. How do you do that? You spend time daily to eat the food, to get on the wall. So a child of God who is really matured doesn't joke with daily meditation because you got to sow into the spirit. If you sow in the flesh, you reap corruption. If you sow in the spirit, you reap life. So it's your duty. It's your duty. It's called maturity. It's called true Christianity. It's not clapping or singing in church. It's how are you living your life? How is your spirit growing? So you're going to feed every day. Have you had a 20 minutes feeding this morning? Are you going to sleep tonight without feeding? How are you going to run your spirit? That is what is called self-control. Somebody say amen. So you can say, I know what I cannot do. I know what I will not do. I will never do that. You say, oh, you are boasting. You are not boasting. You know yourself. You know what you put in yourself. You know your strength. Somebody say, amen. The wall may be shaking. The wall may be moved. Those that will remain will remain because they are standing on the word of God. You are on the word. You are feeding on the wall. You don't live by praise of men. You don't live by applause of men. You know where you are. You know who you are. You are solid. You are Mount Zion because your spirit is built on the world. Yeah. Say bigger, amen. Amen. That's what matters. It's not what men say. These are irrelevant because you will never be judged on any of those. Amen. amen. You will never be judged. Okay, like now, light is gone now. What does it matter? Nothing. You still keep pray. You keep praying. Amen. It doesn't matter. Let's say they were praying and light went. Who cares? Amen. I say amen. That is how Christianity grow. It's about your strong spirit. Say, say self-control. Say, say self-control. That's what makes you a leader in the body of Christ. That is our assignment to reach believers who are in self-control. And I pray for the children who are growing up today in Jesus' name. May the Lord grant you self control. 
May you see your leader in self-control. Amen. Somebody came to me in the office once some, some times ago. I said, why are you doing that? He said, what else do I do, Papa? Everybody's doing it. Everybody said, and they mentioned names. Mention names. I said, look at the examples. The Bible says, be an example of a what? Believer. Be self-control because children are watching you. They are watching you. They see what you are doing. Mm. And they say, you have no self-control. What should I have self-control? Okay, number two is what? Self-respect. Self-respect. Who can define that for me quickly? Self-respect. Yes, Minister A.K. Knowing your boundary. Everybody say, knowing your boundary. Knowing your boundary. And then what? Yes? Knowing your strength and your weaknesses. You are weak in some areas. You have an assignment. You are not everybody. You are not everybody. You are not that man. You are not that woman. You have your own calling. You have your own height. You have your own weight. You have your own subterms. You have your own wife. You have your own daughter. You have your own husband. So that man, that man is not your husband. Don't go near him. That's called self-respect. That woman is not your wife. Don't go near her. It's called self-respect. That woman is not married to you. Don't touch her. Self-respect. You are not a pastor of the church. Don't come to the altar. Self-respect. You are not the owner of the sanctuary. Don't walk around anywhere. Self-respect. Don't disobey rules in the city. You are not the governor. Self-respect. Don't tell police officer, don't talk to me. Self-respect. Don't tell the judge, I'm going to stand where you stay, sit down. Self-respect. You know your rules and boundaries. I'm the pastor of this church, but I'm not the pastor of the courthouse. Self-respect. When you get in there, you sit down. Where they say sit down. Amen. They put you in the front, don't go to the front. Because you are rich and big, it doesn't mean you just come and sit anywhere you are in the sanctuary. When the usher say, sit there, sit there, it's called self-respect. If you don't have self-respect, that's the reason why a lot of people create unnecessary conflict in life. Most relationships break down because there's no self-respect. If you don't respect yourself, you'll be disrespected by the devil, number one. Once you keep yourself in line, the Bible says it. In the book of First John, it said, the wicked one does not touch him. Amen. Because he keepeth himself. Amen. You know where that's in the Bible? Open quickly for me. Let's all read together First John 5, 18. Can we all read together, please? We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. Whoever is born of God does not what? Sin. He does not sin. Why does he not sin? Why? But he that is begotten of God keepeth himself. He does what? Keepeth himself. He keep himself. How do you keep yourself? Through prayer. Through the word. And then if he does keep himself, what happens to him? And that wicked one cannot you touch not, him. In Jesus' name, you are becoming untouchable Amen. because of discipline, Amen. of self-respect. Amen. 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 Just respect yourself. Keep yourself in boundary. Start comparing yourself to somebody else. Know your strength, know your limit, know who you are, and stay in your lane. Amen. I say amen. amen. What's number three? Number three, discipline. We look into. Value strength, son value. Who can define, define value strength? Who can define it for us? I want to call somebody in our place. Minister Samantha, what is value strength? Huh? I cannot hear you. Can you hear her? Yes, godliness. That's powerful. Let's clap for Jesus for that. Amen. Okay. 
There is a, uh, uh, that's godliness. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're perfectly correct, okay? What is called value in life is godliness. It's godliness. It's knowing what is right from what is wrong from God's perspectives, from divine perspective. Many values have been, have been changed by culture, by tradition. They have placed what is wrong above what is right. Okay? If your value is not in line with God's mind, you are out of value. So God doesn't place so much honor on you. There are some things that are more important in life than the others. So there are some things you have to put value on more than others. That has to be defined by God for you. So growing in value is somebody who is godly. Godliness is different from righteousness. Righteousness is where you walk. Godliness is understanding this subject the way God understands it. For example, how you treat a woman, that's a God's way. Amen. That's a, that a man's way. That is a worldly way. How do you treat your children? That is God's way. How do you pay your tithe and offering? They are God's way. God, uh, God has his own definition for everything. But what the devil has been trying to do from ages or from time immemorial is to change God's laws. Changing God's laws in the Bible or changing God's definition in the Bible is called worldliness or antichrist. Antichrist changes God's laws. It tells you, it gives you a new definition for love, for wealth, for women. So if you go to school and colleges, you will come back with different value system. It's different from godly value system. What is wealth? The world will tell you that wealth is about having cars and having money, having all of this in your account. But when you read your Bible, that is not wealth. The world will tell you prosperity is about having money and cash. If you read the Bible, that's not prosperity. So when somebody say, I'm a prosperity preacher, his concept is after the world. When I preach prosperity, I'm not talking about that man who has money on the road. Because I read in my Bible that you can be rich and be poor at the same time. You can be actually rich and be poor at the same time. Look at Revelation 3.17. Let's let me show, give an example there. Revelation 3.17. You can be actually rich and poor. So who is a man calling you rich? Depends on their value system. Who is a man calling you poor? It depends on their value system. If your value is not centered after divine value, you still need to learn and be disciplined. That's why somebody can come into the church and do some things because they have no value for the Holy Spirit. They can play with their offering, they have no value for offering. They can disrespect pastor, they have no value for, for anointing. Those who have value for anointing would never in this world disrespect a man of God. It's impossible. That's why David is different. They will say, I will never touch you because of the anointing. It's not because of the man, it's his value system. He knows God and the anointing. Amen. Somebody who have no respect for the Holy Ghost will come to the house and say, Who is the Holy Ghost? Holy Ghost is in the house. Where is he coming from? I can't see him. Where is he? And then he'll do, he'll do whatever he likes. But, because, but when you have a strong godliness, you know God is in the house. You comport yourself. It affects the way you behave, the way you honor people, the way you honor God, the way you treat others. You place value. You will never respect anything you don't have value on it. If a woman has no value for you, she's just 
an object, that's the way you're going to treat her. If that money has no business in your hand, has no value, you're going to waste it. Without value, there's going to be abuse. Anywhere you see abuse in this world, the problem is value. That's what the Bible called them, children of Belia. The word Belia there means worthless, valueless. He said, do not put them around the altar. He said, do not give holy things to dogs. He said, do not. Never give. You see somebody who is a child of Belia, who is flagrant, who doesn't care, and you make him a pastor of the church, it will waste God's girls, it will waste God's gold, and it will waste God's glory. Those three things must not be touched. Because the problem is value. That's why you have to be spiritual before you become a leader. And your value system is what God will instill. God, that's what up to today, Esau couldn't get his birthright back. Because as far as Esau was concerned, he's just a birthright. But he lost it for generations after time to come. He was hungry. As far as he was concerned, food is more important. Without a strong value system, you will always despise prayer and fasting. You will put food above fasting. There are believers today who don't fast at all. They never fast. Because oh, fasting, what does it mean? Prayer, what does it mean? But when it comes to partying, everything, that's where the heart is. Your, your heart will always be where your treasure is. If your treasures are carnal, you are carnal. Amen. So you always have to say, God, is this the way you think? Is this the way? Is this all about? For me, when I see wealth, I say, Lord, is this all about wealth? If what men call wealth is what is wealth in the Bible, I don't want it. I don't want it. Because, but, but, but thank God when I discover in the scripture, it's not the what is wealth is. Amen. Riches is not what this say it's, it's about. Beauty is not what the word it's about. No, it's not. So you look, you go around, you see so many ladies shouting, screaming, dressing. They call them figure head, figure this, and you and they call them beautiful. But you say, ah, but it's not beautiful because your value is different. When you are making your choice, you are making your choice on your value system. I know a woman that is beautiful, trust me. Because they will help your destiny. They will sustain your destiny. All those beautiful things will die one day, one day. I mean, I, because that's what's done. Monday will be done. Fun will be done. All day will be done. But one thing that will last is a woman that fears the Lord. Amen. A woman that fears the Lord will stay by your side in and out of it all. Somebody say amen. amen. So when you are looking for beauty, you are not looking for sex. You are looking for a woman that fears the Lord. Somebody say amen. amen. You are looking for a pastor. You are looking for the one that is anointed, that, asks, that, that teaches, uh, teaches uh, all the revelation of the Bible. No, that's all you are looking for. You are looking for the one that God sent to you. Amen. That's your pastor. That's your prophet. That's my man of God. So you don't have value system. You are just jumping all over the place looking for good church. The happy crowd. Your destiny is not tied there. You just listen. After everything is said and done, you still have to answer for your life. Mm. After everything is said and done, where did God send you to? Mm. Who is your man of God? Who is your own gift? Many people don't know it. They are lost because where they are carrying worldly value. Oh, that man's anointed, he's pray. I mean, I've seen people who are anointed, they pray, 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 pray. Does not happen? Somebody who's anointed, pray for you, and God answers his prayer. Hmm. Amen. Amen. My prayer works for some people very well. It does. Because they are mine. They are not mine. They are the one the Lord sent to me. Amen. Amen. They are the Lord sent to me. So when I actually really pray for them, I say result. If I actually really pray for some people, I must say result. Because God sent them to me. Except that sometimes you are too busy praying, you are too busy on that stuff, amen? Mm. If I pray for you, if I pray for somebody, if I have enough time to come to church and do seven hours and pray for you, you will, you, you are, I mean, don't let me say too much, too much amen? Mm. You will prosper. Amen. You must. 
because you have become a project. Because God gave it to me. God said, take care of him. Take care of her. But what the devil will do is to make sure you don't have enough time to take care of what God gave. That's why we are doing all of this. Amen. I say amen. I say amen. amen. Say value system. The Lord restore my value system. I need to know the time. You know, I'm just in a... I'm enjoying myself now, amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Just keep telling me so that I don't keep preaching. Sometimes I'm so serious preaching. Sometimes I just get funny preaching. It all depends on the way I'm led. Somebody say amen. Say value system. I was going to read Revelation 3, right? Verse 17. Let's all read together. Let's go. Let's all read together. Let's go. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods. Who said I'm rich? Efficient church, right? <laughs> are there some people in the world today saying they are rich? Mm. Yeah. Are there some people in the world today saying they are rich? Oh, yes. Say they are what? They are rich. They increase with goods. That is a part, that's what they think rich is about. But what did Jesus say of them? Read on. And have need of nothing. And yeah. knowest not thou art wretched and miserable. And but thou know not that you are what? You are wretched and miserable. miserable. You are poor, you are blind, and you are naked. So at the time you are calling yourself rich, somebody is calling you wretched. So whose definition do you follow? At the time you are calling yourself beautiful, someone is calling you ugly. So there are different value systems. That's why when you come to God, it's called godliness. You change your mindset to define things in line with the way God sees them. Say, shout it loud and clear, Heavenly Father, Father, impart me me with a discipline of value. value. Take away abuse 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 from my life forever. Say, Amen. Amen. And number four is focus strength. You can define that. Focus strength. When it's said, what is focus strength? Ability to keep your eyes, to steady your eyes, to stay your eyes on where you are going, on your vision, on your assignment, on your relationship, on what God gives you. Because if your eyes are not on the Lord, the devil is always looking for eyes. The second it takes your eyes away from the Lord and put your eyes on the wind, it will destroy your faith. It will destroy your faith. Whatever your transformation, your impartation, your, your reception, they all depend on your focus. And focus is not just what you are looking at. It's how you are looking at it. It's a consistency. Just turn your eyes on one thing. It makes you steady consistent in life while all those have been driven by the wind you are focused and everybody who is focused they make less mistakes in life they make less mistakes because the enemy is looking for one mistake to put you down and once your eyes is off it will strike but keep your eyes on Christ it doesn't matter the wind blowing you will make it I said keep your eyes on Christ you will make it Keep our eyes on the vision, we'll make it. It's still possible. Just keep your eyes on the vision. It doesn't matter what the enemy is doing, it will surely come to pass. Somebody say, Amen. What the Lord has said will come to pass. And that's the key to win battles, to win fight. Once you locate the focus, the weakness of your of your opponent. Just keep your eyes on it until you can reach it. Amen. Just keep your eyes on it. When you are fighting, in battles, wrestling, just focus on one thing until you can get to that point. And when somebody is eating you in a fight, in a battle, and uh, in, in, in anything, make sure you don't take your eyes away from your opponent. 
Even when you are going through whatever wind, trouble, attack, just keep your eyes. Focus. In that way, you will eventually win. But once one blow hits you on the side, and then you turn your eyes, your focus on the side, another one is coming to the, to the head. But once your eye is shown, even though you are feeling the pain, your eyes, you can block. Amen. So one, a good wrestler, a good boxer, will give you a kick here, ready to give you a kick there. All it's trying to do is to take your eyes away from the one here. So it's called distraction, it's called genuflating, whatever they call it, or fainting. They got it, but keep your eyes. Watch those fighters, they keep their eyes. Even when they feel the pain, they keep, keep their eyes. They are feeling the pain, they keep their eyes. So they can block the next one and then do their own. Somebody say, Lord, keep my eyes on my focus in life. On my focus in life. On my vision in life. My vision in life. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. Say, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Keep my eyes, keep my eyes on, on Jesus 24 7. Can I hear louder? Amen. Amen. And then the fifth one was what? Is what? Huh? Mental strength. Mental discipline. Mental discipline. Read first uh, Corinthians chapter 7, verse 37. First Corinthians 7, 37. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Lord, I will say mental strength. Amen. And ability to make up your mind. Ability to be in charge of your mind and your thoughts. Where you can say, I will. That has to be reinforced by the word. If you don't have that strength of the word, you can't say, I will. That's why many of us can't keep promises. Can't keep plans. Because as soon as the wind blows, we give up. We, we just give up. The, 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 it's called pressure. So your mind has to be strong on what God wants you to do. So you, your will is reinforced. But this has to be uh, reinforced through the word of God, through strength. I will not die. Amen. No evil shall befall me. That is mental strength. That's faith through strong mind. Read First Corinthians chapter seven, verse thirty-seven. Nevertheless, let's all read. Let's go. Nevertheless, he that standeth steadfast in his heart has no necessity, but hath power over his own will. He has power over his own will. He has a virgin. I said, I will not fornicate. So why will he not fornicate? He has a feeling. He has the emotion, he's going through him or her, but he said, I will not do it. I will keep my virgin. Why? Because he has power over his own mind. If you read the NLT, he has power over his mind. He's a man that says, I will not. Those are the kind of men that when they go through temptation, try and struggles, they don't budge. The Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, they told the king, even though you put us in the fire, we will not bow down. You will not bow down. It doesn't matter what I go through, I will not backslide. That's what they call mental strength. With mental strength, you will surely succeed. Because the only person that will give up is not you. The devil will give up for you. Amen. Just stay where you are. And, say, and God will reinforce it. You will see somebody say in the hospital, no, this sickness will not kill me. I mean, as soon as the prophet enters and look at your face, they see your faith, they say you shall now die. Because they see the will to live in you. They see your spirit rise, your mind is made up. And say, I will not. But the second the prophet comes in and then all you hear is tears. 
I was going to pray for somebody. As soon as I got in there, I know this one is already gone. Everything is just begging and crying and begging and crying and begging and crying. Oh God, you pray. I tried to revive to revive faith. It wasn't going to work. I knew in me it's going to work. Because whatever happens, your mind has to be made up. Somebody say, "Man, you must have a power over your mind." Say, "In the name of Christ Jesus, according to God's word, so shall it be for me. So shall it be for me. The so shall it be for me." Say, "I am the head and not the tail." That's the only time you can fight off all this affliction. I say, "You debt out of this house because your mind is made up on God's word." Somebody say louder, Amen. Amen. That's mental strength, focus strength, and the last one is what? Last week, management discipline. Who can define that, Pastor Amanda? Management discipline. Yeah. Just go ahead. In, in Jesus' name. Lift your hands, stand to your feet, punch your hands towards me, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. Punch your hands towards me, church. Heavenly Father. Father. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Whatever you are putting my hands. hands, I receive grace. grace, Discipline. discipline, discipline, To receive it. To receive it. To hold it. To hold it. To keep it. To keep it. To grow it. To grow it. All of strength in me. With management. management, Strength. strength. All of impart me. With a mind. mind, Of possibility. possibility, And profitability. Raise me a Raise me a, a manager, a manager, a manager, a manager of the resources, resources. In Jesus' name, in Jesus every, name. Class, every class, any student, every student place in my hand, place in my hand, going forward, going forward, all of cause them, all all cause them, them to, grow to grow in the name of Jesus. Raise me a manager, a steward, a steward of the resources. We get a print on right now, Moshe. I'm going to I'm going to talk about it.